On this week's episode of Magnified, we have Sylvia Dana, the KV Core Queen. Um, thank you for joining us, Sylvia. So I always have the guests introduce themselves because who who's better than, than the person themselves? So if you want to give a little intro to everybody about who you are, what you do. So I am Sylvia Dana with EXP Realty and I'm in Grand Rapids, Michigan area. And um, I'm an agent. I have a team. I have been um, helping agents with KV Core since 2018. Didn't mean to. Just kind of started happening. Um, best, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, so um, long story short, I mean, it's been about five years now since I started helping agents. And then and then that started taking more and more of my life over. And uh, that was surprising. I was I people what would happen is I would put my videos on YouTube um, as I was helping agents and live Zooms. And then people are like, hey, I saw your video on how to set up KB Core. Can you just do it for me? I'm like, I don't have time for that. <laughs> but eventually I caved. I started doing it. And then, you know, I hired people to do this, my setup for people because I didn't have time. And then I, you know, now, long story short, I have like 14 employees. And and we're, um, the other thing that started happening is people would see my WordPress website. Well, I want actually your Word. I want that site. What's that site? Oh, that's WordPress. And, I like, you know, resisted for a long time till finally I'm like, okay, fine. You know, so now we're doing those and it just kind of turned this thing, but I'm still an active agent. Yeah. So I I was going to go that route real quick. So you're active agent. How many uh, agents are on your team right now? And what would you say like the split of your time is uh, being an agent versus the the online stuff? Not enough being an agent. So I only have two right now on my immediate actual team yeah. um and then i have like a, a revenue share group a sales organization um but i'm you know only intimately involved with my um agents daily business who are actually on my team um and you know my time personally i'm really like 90 percent doing my coaching business versus 10 percent on my real estate business and i'm trying to flip it <laughs> A bit, not 100%, just 50. I like it to be 50 50. It's not there right now. We're working on it. Work in progress. Yeah. I mean, I can understand how that happens, right? Um, Ultimately, I guess I'm speaking for you here. I would imagine it comes from uh, a passion of helping people, right? A lot lot of agents get into it for that in the first place. Now you have even more people you can help. Yeah, 100%. You know, I, I, when I used to, when I started teaching agents how to do stuff in KV Core or just digital marketing in general, um, a couple of my colleagues were like, why are you doing this? Like, what, you're wasting your time, you know? Cause I would like literally get up in the morning, like, oh, I got to do a video on that. <laughs> oh, they, other agents need to know how to do this. Um, you know, oh, they need to know how to do that. And, <laughs> and so I just started creating this content. And then I would host, um, I used to call it KB Core Happy Hour. I still do, but now only my coaching clients can come to it. But I used to do it free and people come to KB Core Happy Hour, you know, hundreds of agents. And I just teach them how to do stuff. And I just enjoyed it. And it was yeah. fun for me. And that's what I got out of it. And uh, um, and and it was, it took a long time for me to actually monetize it. And I only had to monetize it because it was t- took over so much of my life. And, you know, I was selling a lot less real estate because I'm like, I know, okay, I gotta, I yeah. have to, you know, if I'm, I want, I'm coming at this from contribution and I enjoy it and I do have a passion for it. And I know I'm helping reduce frustration for agents <laughs> and helping them get excited about marketing. Um, and so it's just, it does something for me. It, you know, it's the reason I get out of bed, really. I'd rather do that than go show a house. Although I love selling real estate and I enjoy showing houses. Like I just got to show a house this weekend for some buyers who haven't bought a home in a really long time. They've lived in their same home for a really long time, but their family's growing. Their boys are getting bigger. And, you know, and I love, I love that experience yeah. too. So anyway, long story short, um, I, I, I just do it because, I mean, obviously this business is a people business, right? So I love helping buyers. I love helping sellers. And I really love helping agents. Uh, it's yeah. just, you know, and especially, you know, those agents, whether they're struggling, whether they're seasoned, whether they're tech savvy, whether they're tech challenged, whether they're like mega icon team leaders, solo agents, um, you know, they've been through the 
the you know downturn in 2008 or they're they've only been around the last couple of years and they, they don't know what it's really like like I like them all you know so yeah. I just enjoy it yeah and I guess you look at it from the perspective that the more a- agents you help the more buyers and sellers you're helping because there's that knock-on effect right so you're actually there you go <laughs> Yes, 100%. So you, <laughs> well, maybe and, you, know, you don't and, have to keep it at 50 50, you know, maybe that's not the target. But right. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know the answer to, to, you know, solve my time dilemma. Yeah. Uh, just every, but it's fine. Yeah. I'm happy. Yeah, so, so what does, what does coaching entail? So what are you coaching agents on doing? Uh, I mean, a variety. I mean, it started out with just like, hey, this is how you do this in KB Core. But because I am an active agent and I understand these agents, what they're going through, what their lives are like. I know now like what they don't know, what they do know, what they understand about technology, what they don't. So, so, you know, I can really give them full digital marketing, you know, real estate marketing um, advice or guidance. So like yesterday on a coaching call, we talked about expired listings and for sale by owners. And um, I gave them my campaign. I have a 30 day listing proposal that I've used to get for sale by owner listings and expired listings. Yeah. And so we're going into the spring market. So I talked about kind of my strategy um, for doing that and in a fun way. Cause I do not like to make cold calls. It's not something I enjoy. Um, and a lot of agents don't, although I know we have to do hard things, right? as even the things we don't like to do. So I know I'm going to have to do that to some extent, but I like to just go door knock them and, yeah. and bring them a, a dollar store balloon and a smile. Here's your instant home value. Here's like a little door hanger, uh, you know, um, and nice. you know, some candy and my business card and like a QR code to go to my Katie Core site and all that stuff. So, I, and I talk to agents about like what I do and what kind of works for me, for my personality and and then that gives them ideas. And so it's, you know, I like to collaborate with agents. So I'm, yeah. I'm it's way beyond just how to add a contact in KB Core or create a custom campaign. You know, some agents come to me like, I want your campaigns. And I'm like, I'm not gonna sell you on my campaigns. My campaigns are me. Yeah. You're gonna take you're gonna take my ideas and then apply them to your to you. You're you're a different person than I am. You're a different agent. I can give you a pathway, but you're not gonna follow it. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, if if you came, if I came to you and you know you started coaching me and telling me to go knocking on doors like that, I would have laughed and said, "Sylvia, that sounds great, but exactly. I ain't doing it. That's not exactly. my personality." Yeah, so I, I love door knocking. I think it's fun, but I do it in a fun way. Yeah, like, yeah. So you know, I I partner up with another agent. We go to the dollar store. We get some dollar store balloons that with happy faces on. We get ourselves some diet cokes and some snacks. Drive, yeah. <laughs> drive around and go to the you know, and then. And then we get a good, uh, and it's fun to talk to people at their door um, and just, you know, get their contact information, see how we can follow up with them over over time. And then, you know, and whether it's an online lead or somebody at the door, when you show up as a motivated agent, again, whether it's online stranger or some a stranger at the door, when you show up as a motivated agent, if they're a motivated potential seller or potential buyer, they're going to be attracted to your yeah. energy. You know, and if they're not motivated, um, you gauge that and then you adjust your energy to match theirs so that you're still welcome in their world. (laughs) So I talk about that kind of stuff, you know, because I've been I, you know, I was a journalist. I was a high school teacher and I sold cars as well. So I I have a lot of, you know, experience from life I can kind of bring into how I do my business. Yeah, I guess the, the main difference with those, you know, selling cars as well is like, people come to you knowing, you know, knowing they want to buy something. Whereas with real estate, you're going out looking for prospects. It's a bit of a different game. To an extent, yes. But what's different about the car business, it's so um, dog eat dog. Yes. So what I, to real estate there, yeah. mm-hmm. what I had to do, I, t- yes, they did come to the dealership, but because, you know, I was, a, hadn't been there very long when I started uh, and I had ever sold cars before, you know, when I started, this was like 10 years ago. Um, and the other people that had been there forever, they sat up in front, they got all the ups, they got all the ups. And it's just like, you couldn't stop them. So like, how am I going to overcome this? So we were closed on Sundays. And so I used to go to the car lot on a Sunday, hang out for a couple hours, wear just regular clothes, but I had yeah. my name badge with me and, and like my business cards and like a notepad. And I'd hang out on the car lot and people would drive around. You know, and um, 
the car a lot and I'd stop them and say, Hey, you know, guess what? I work here. I'm, I'm a salesperson here, but guess what? What's great is I cannot sell you a car today. So you can talk to me. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, do you have any questions about like the GM discounts we have going on? So we sold GM. Yeah. You know, do you have any questions about this? Counts or you know any cars so I would I would talk about the cars I would talk about the products I would talk about the discounts and the, the sales and the promotions and used cars new cars and uh, I just hand out my business card take notes and follow up with them or sometimes they wouldn't have to follow up it just depended and the next week you know they would just come in and ask for me and that's how so yeah. I could just sit at my desk and they'd come to me and that first, was but I did have to I, I did have to take an extra mile to be able to do yeah. that otherwise Very I wouldn't. Nice. Talking about cars reminds me of so not the car I'm in now, but two the, the prior two leases to that, I literally had the car on the lot that I wanted. I was texting the guy. I had a better deal somewhere else. So I just said, yeah. if you can match this, I'll come and get the car right now. Yeah. yeah. Didn't text me back. I called in, didn't respond to my call, didn't mm-hmm. follow up. So I went to the other dealer. Mm-hmm. It's a good a good example of um of follow up, right? Like one hundred percent motivation and stuff. I think that is one of the ways, especially in real estate, where there's just most markets are saturated with with agents. Well, you know, what happens to agents, um, and this is kind of a a concept I teach, um, you know, are you more like Santa Claus or Sleeping Beauty when it comes to your database and your business? You know, we're kind of like waiting for that potential client to reach out to us or even our friends and family. Oh, well, they know I'm in real estate. They'll let me know if they need something. Um, or, or oh, you know, this is a lead that came in and, and they've been on my campaign, you know, asking them if they want to restart their home search. And they've been on my campaign getting property alerts. And if they need me, they'll reach out to me. No, that's not a thing. So I always use this example of the movie Kate and Leopold. You know that movie? It's got Hugh Jackman and Meg Ryan in it. It's from, I don't know, how many years ago? A while ago. And the the premise is that Hugh Jackman is like from 1876 and like somehow travels through time in the Brooklyn Bridge (laughs) to meet, you know, the modern day now Meg Ryan and uh, her, you know, her, and and she's called Kate. And um, anyway, so Hugh Jackman, Leopold, is talking to Kate's brother. And the brother is talking about how he met this girl and he gave her a phone call, left her a message. And now the ball's in her court. And he's like, oh, no, 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 no. The point is to keep the ball in your court. You're pursuing them. And and so when I'm talking about sales and follow up, it's like you are pursuing that potential client. They they need to know that you're not going to give up. So like, I think about one time I had this health insurance agent reach out to me. I mean, and she was just, uh, I actually needed insurance (laughs) at the time. And so she, and, and, but I, so she kept messaging me. I just really wasn't ready to deal with it. I thought I I was set with something else. And, and I just kind of put her off and just like, yeah, I didn't say don't stop texting me. I just was like, not ready. Um, and so for whatever the messages were, she could sense, I just wasn't ready, but she was persistent Yeah. and calling and messaging. And finally, what well, it took like probably six months and then I was ready. <laughs> yeah. But if it wasn't her for her follow-up, I would have never done it. So there's a book called, um, fanatical prospecting by Jeb Blunt, mm-hmm. which I, um, I started reading, I think when I was, when I first got into real estate. And it's just the idea that especially an online lead um, or, you know, stranger who doesn't like you, know you or trust you yet, it could be at least 12 times before they actually respond to you. Um, And so, you know, 12 messages from your campaign might not be enough. You might have to push yourself further. What else can you do? Can you do a video messages? Can you, you know, can you call? Can you door knock them? What can you do? to take it the extra mile to do that true follow-up so somebody can get to know you, like you and trust you a little quicker. Yeah. Yeah. And I like providing value in terms of what I'm sending out, you know, the, the drip campaigns are great and everything, but like if you're providing value within that, you know, how do you prepare your house for selling? Exactly. It's the winter season. How, what, any tips on how to prepare the the house for the winter, you know, that Mm -hmm. kind of stuff and not just market reports, which obviously is like a staple of of follow-up. 
Um, well, you know, it's like it's like that. Uh, you know that I said. You know, are you Sleeping Beauty? Are you Santa Claus? Yeah. So being Santa Claus is being that gift giver, that value giver. So yeah. yes, you said. Yeah, because I think about my own um, patterns as a consumer. That's always who I go with. Whoever's providing me the most knowledge, especially if I show up somewhere and they start educating me on mm-hmm. a, on something without trying to sell it to me. You know, they've got no no skin in the game. They just want to, you know, right. educate. Yeah. Uh, yes. So what kind of uh, you've worked with uh, agents across the spectrum, right across the country. What yeah. would you say? I know, as we just said, every agent is different. Every follow-up tactic is going to be different depending on the personalities. But are there some like common traits that you see across across the board for the more successful agents? Like, what are they doing on a day to day that's really setting them above the rest? Well, are we when when it comes to like online lead generation conversion? Mm-hmm. I can start there. Yeah. Um, having a strong social media presence, not just social media, but just digital presence. So for example, some agents, you know, I teach KB core, right? There's other systems like KB core chime or Sierra interactive boomtown. Yeah. These, these systems have a consumer facing website, IDX. Yeah. They have a CRM in the background, you know, the ability to send drip campaigns and they're on market reports and search alerts. So these are the kind of systems I'm talking about. So with that website, uh, your your systems website, you know, that's one, one piece, one piece of your puzzle for your, your SEO, I'm going to call it. So for your, your digital marketing presence, you know, what is another one? Having a Facebook business page. What's another one? Having a Google My Business page. What's another one? Making sure your realtor.com, your Zillow, your next door, all these free profiles you can have for real estate are set up. Your association profile, your company profile is, is set up with a nice bio, um, with, listing the area you serve. It doesn't have to be like your life story, but who, what type of realtor are you? What type of person are you? What type of people do you serve? What areas do you serve? What's your website? What's your phone number? What's your email? <laughs> you know, you, where's your picture? Like just have making sure this is all updated. Your LinkedIn, because, um, you know, I have agents saying, well, you know, people can't find my website. It's like, they're not looking for your website. They're looking for you. <laughs> um, and so, and so, you know, you have to have strong content and strong presence by having everything updated. Um, as far as any profile you could possibly be have. So I tell agents, Google yourself and then Google me, just my name and see how we compare. And then look at all the profiles I have and then see what you're missing. You know, and I have a, like a training on, you know, digital domination checklist. But anyway, that's people who are successful with getting leads easier and getting more organic leads have a strong uh, online presence. Isn't that funny? It's like everyone wants that magic trick or whatever, but it's just that fundamentals, it's right? Yeah, It's work is what it, it's it called. Work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and in terms of like follow-up and stuff, what, what do you see the, again, where the successful agents, what are, what are they doing with their follow-up? Um, is there a particular cadence that seems to work or a particular type of follow-up that, that gets traction or is it really that's sporadic. <laughs> um, so, you know, right now I can just think of KB Core because that's what I use, right? Um, there's there's specific messages in there. And then a lot of uh, agents will say, well, I don't like that message. It doesn't sound like me. You know, a lot of agents are a little bit egomaniacs. Um, nobody cares what they sound like. Like I tell agents, nobody cares what you sound like. In fact, if you can get them to read the email or the text, you're like halfway yeah. there, <laughs> you know? And so, you know, the messages should be designed to get a reply, you know, tell me more about your, what you're looking for in your home, you know, you know, do, are you thinking of buying or selling in the next 45 days? And if so, let me know. And how can I help you? You know, just thinking of, you know, how can you get a reply with your campaign messages, with your follow-up? I think video messaging is like the new black. So especially with our online leads, because they don't, you are strangers. And with your phone number, especially if you don't have a phone number and only an email do this, but no matter what, if you haven't had a chance to get your face in front of them, 
video messaging is the way to go. So at KB Core, for example, there's Core Video Premium, which is a bomb bomb, bomb, bomb integration. Okay. Um, so, you know, or if you don't not using KB Core, you could get bomb bomb or something like it. But basically the idea is every time they open an email or a text, you've got a video message there. So you can create generic ones, you know, for like a new buyer lead, a new seller lead that will go out automatically. You know, hey, it's Sylvia Dana here. I'm a local agent here in West Michigan. And you just looked at my website. You looked at some properties on my website and I would love to help you. Do you have any real estate questions? Are you thinking about buying soon? I can pair you with a lender. Have you been pre-approved? Do you want to go see houses? I can introduce myself. They can see my face, get my energy and decide if they like me yet. Because now I'm creating some familiarity quicker and somebody is going to respond to you when they start to like you, know you and trust you, right? So, mm-hmm. so I think video messaging, as far as follow-up is concerned, is is what agents should be focusing on. Yeah. You know, so I gave up on it too quick, but there was a period for about three or four open houses where I would record it and it took a long time. I would be at the house still when I'd finished and I'd record a mm-hmm. video and send it to the people by text, just thanking them for coming to the house. I'd mention their name in there. I think uh, that's that was so like brilliant. That. Yeah. Now, I will tell you, I did not believe in the power of this as much until it was a couple of years ago. I had a listing myself and uh, we got under contract. And of course, it was multiple offer situation in, in a couple of years ago. Um, yeah. And the lender, I knew the company, but I, I never did a deal with this company before. And I didn't know this particular guy who was the lender. The day after we went under contract, he had sent me just like he just recorded a video message on his phone. It wasn't bomb bomb or anything like that. It was just a video message under a minute long, just saying, hey, you know, Sylvia, this is Chris at such and such company. We haven't met yet, but my clients are, you know, are the clients who are under contract at 123 Main Street. Main Street. They're very excited. I just want you to know they're very well qualified. We're going to meet today to start the underwriting process. They can't wait to get in that home and congratulations to your sellers. Someone, so and so mentioned their name. Um, I'm sure they're looking forward to the next chapter of the journey. I just want you to know the next step is blah, blah, blah. And whatever it was. <laughs> and, and if you have any questions in the meantime, let me know. And I got that. And I was like, Oh my God, I love you. Who are you? Yeah, that's brilliant. You yeah. know? And, it, and, and so when he did that, I'm like, okay, there's so much power in that because I did not know him before. And now I wanted to be his best friend, Yeah, you know? So I think video messaging is the way to go. Yeah. And I think and the reason I gave up uh, just because you don't, you're not going to see, and it was my own naivety. And, you know, I was younger back then. Didn't know what I know now, but like, you're not going to necessarily get something from the video, but it's mm. the fact that, all right, you're going to be sending them buyer searches, put them on the drip campaign. They're always going to associate with, oh, that's the guy that sends the videos or that's the yeah. guy that sent me that video. And then when the yeah. time is right, they're going to think of you. Yeah, exactly. Um. Yeah. So we talked about some successful traits, anything, you, you know, common mistakes you see agents make that you've got to really nip in the bud and, you know, what can they do that can turn that around real quick for themselves? Hmm. I wait so, to bet giving up is actually one of the big ones, right? They give up on stuff. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, I will say, you know, this is the big, bigger picture, right? Bigger yeah. picture being a real estate agent. Um. A lot of agents, when they're new, they come into a company, let's say, and they are just, a lot of agents expect things to be handed to them on a silver platter. Yeah. Because maybe they didn't come from a a previous position that was 100% commission. They weren't ever independent contractors. They weren't really ever entrepreneurs before. Yeah. And and they think that somebody else is going to tell them the magic answer of, and, and help them beyond what really they, that is going to happen for an independent contractor like that. So, so they have the wrong expectations. And so that's the first problem. And so, so to fix it, the expectation should be like, this is my business. I'm going to figure this out. And if I don't have an answer, I'm going to be the one to, find the answer for myself and I am going to come up with a solution. Um, I'm going to find the solution. So just believing that there is a solution that you can find it and being your own advocate, I think is what any new agent or struggling agent 
should do. Not just like, you know, I'm just going to wait here till somebody calls me to, to buy or sell a house. And I see a lot of agents making that mistake. Um, they'll say, uh, oh, I'm going to buy Zillow leads. Okay, great. That's great. But, you know, do you know how to handle them? Um, who, you know, I feel like you probably shouldn't get something like a Zillow lead until you have, you know, really gone through the process of, you know, working with an, a, a contract to close from beginning to end, working with multiple buyers, because there's so many little nuances and safety concerns you have to think about. I think you have to be like a real professional to handle, you know, the onslaught you can get of Zillow leads and the different scenarios you get. People don't want to tell you if they're pre-approved. They don't want to tell you if they're already working for a, with a realtor. But anyway, I think, you know, you know, you were saying you don't want a door knock and that's fine. Right. But my very first managing broker gave me some good advice. And he said, focus on five different lead sources uh, that you can, that you can, that you like, but no more than five, no less than three. So that's what I did. So what are examples of lead sources as is focusing on, you know, posting on social media and generating leads from social media. Is that what I want to focus on? Um, if, if I don't know, let me try it. Let me try it. I'm getting some results. Okay. If you're getting results, double down on that. Okay. A third, a third source, um, networking. Are you going out to, you know, chamber of commerce events, community events, um, meeting people, sharing business cards, referral groups. Are you doing that? you getting any results from that? If you are double down on it, you know, okay. and so find like three to five sources that, that you can focus on at a time and then double down on the ones that are start bringing you results. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I used to struggle with the fact, cause I was young. I think I was in my yeah. late twenties when I got into it. I, that, I, that, I felt like that counted against me. I wasn't, I, I perceived that people wouldn't take me as seriously. And, you know, the majority of the agents in my area were in their fifties, you know, yeah. it's kind of their second career. But I ended up trying to use that to my advantage and was like, no, I'm going to show that I have more energy than everybody else because I am young and I am yeah. I am willing to work. So, you know, I kind of did it that way. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, the I think especially for new agents, like you said, like it, it is difficult to figure out where to start getting leads from. And I fell into that trap of spending thousands of dollars on buying leads. Mm-hmm. And like you said, I didn't know what to do with them. Exactly. If I, knew, I know the- now I would have been much better, but... <laughs> It is the number one question I get, Sylvia, when I get a lead, what do I do with it? And I'm like, what do you mean? And so, so, so anyway, uh, now I understand what they mean. They just actually don't know. Yeah. Like, okay, well, do you have a phone number? Let's call them. Like until you, t- until you get to reach them, it, let's text them until you get some responses. Do we have an email? Let's email them until we get some responses. Like let's. You know, that's what you're going to do with it. Yeah. And then what other things can you do? How can you provide value? What can you send a weekly newsletter? Or, you know, can you um, send video messages? Can you drop something at their home? You know, can you mail them something? What What's all the possibilities? And yeah. try them and see what's getting results and then double down on that thing. Yeah, and I think that's where having a coach or a mentor really comes into play because if you don't know that it's normal to not get responses from people, it's normal mm-hmm. that they're just going to ignore you, you're going to yes. give up. Whereas if you yeah. no, she's like, you're probably going to get this for another 12 months, but just yeah. stick at it. And and I know I can't stress that enough. Like I have paid for a, so much money. <laughs> <laughs> to to coaches uh, myself and I still do. Um and, you know, I get not only amazing ideas, but just the encouragement that I need to, to keep going. Right. Um, so it, it it's worth it to have mentors and coaches and and it's worth it to pay for them. Yeah, I, I 100 percent agree. If I got back into the game, I would 100 percent, you know, get a coach, get a mentor yeah. to really and not just a group, but like some one on one stuff. I think it's one on one. Yeah. So. You know, it's funny when I first became a real estate agent, my, you know, the two pieces of advice that my um, first managing broker gave me, the one was about the five sort lead sources. Yeah. And, and he didn't like tell me all about them. It's like, I had to figure that out myself. What are the lead sources? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then, and then the second one um, was, oh shoot, I just lost it. Uh, hang on. We were talking about. uh leads follow up shoot you just said something and it just left my brain 
<laughs> it'll come back. I'll, I'll come back to it. Keep, yeah, yeah. keep going. Well, I, I wanted to kind of make a segue now into the online coaching and that side of business because a lot of our listeners are um are marketing agencies or developers themselves so they have that you know that kind of business going on right what kind of um because obviously you didn't get into it like knowing this is what you wanted to do right you had no prior training I had no, of, I had no idea. online business right no clue yeah so you know knowing what you know now experience what you've experienced now you said you have 14 people working for you on my staff yeah yeah that's a that's a decent decent yeah, size staff it, it, it's painful yeah it, what what would you do if you had to start from scratch now if you were you scratch. five so, years ago yeah what would you do so the first thing i first of all i was just want to say i do remember what i was going to say he, the other yeah. advice he gave me was oh because i said how am i going to learn how to do all this and he's like watch tom ferry videos and that's how i actually oh, got started yeah. i just watched tom ferry videos yeah but but anyway what i don't know what i would really do different I mean, knowing as I, how would I know what I know now? I wouldn't. I, I want to tell you one thing that I did right um, when I first started is I understood the power of my online presence. Mm-hmm. And I was at Coldwell Banker when I started. And we didn't have uh, a website that they gave us at the time. And we had like the most simple CRM that was like in that we put our contacts in this Coldwell Banker like sort of our own little on um, our own little profile that we had actually like our own little back office thing yeah. but it wasn't a serum it was just like to where to keep our contacts and that wasn't doing anything for me or helpful so I had to look for a lot of different CRMs mm-hmm. to find one that I like so I tried everything like top producer contactually realty juggler um uh lion's desk uh referral maker pro like I tried them all and they yeah. all had a really hard setup and, mm-hmm. and and they all had a big learning curve. So, I mean, I wasted a lot of time, but I learned a lot. Yeah. And what did I learn? I learned that every CRM is really hard to set up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so, but anyway, so, but one thing I did right is that, you know, I didn't have a website either. Right. So I knew how to build my own websites because I had enough of a background to do it. So I did, I built myself a WordPress website and, you know, you had my own branding. Um, and then when I switched brokers and went to EXP, that was super easy because I had my own branding. My own branding went with me. I already had my own Google My Business page. So I had to just do some tweaks there. Um, I had my own uh, Facebook business page. Just had to change the branding there. Um, you know, I had my own WordPress website. Just had to change the branding there. But it was my it was my sylviadana.com. I didn't have to you know, yeah. do anything major. I didn't lose anything. It was my own little CRM that I had that came with me too. Or if I didn't, I would have been able to export my contacts because they were already in there and that would have been easy enough to import into somewhere else. So I, I knew I did it right so that uh-huh. so that my branding was with me and I could take it anywhere. And um and I understood too that um that I had to figure this out on my own. <laughs> <laughs> And I had to find the answers and thank God for Google. Uh, okay. So, so anyway, uh, as far as if I had to do anything over again, the only thing I could, I don't know that I would have done anything different. Uh, it's really for me because uh, uh, I'm not sure, like I wouldn't have known about all the things that I know about um, now. I wouldn't have done anything different. I think, I think that I'm the kind of person that I just, I dive in and I just plow through until I get the answers. So I guess my only thing is I wish every agent also approached things that way Yeah. because I do work with a lot of agents and, um, and so many of them are just waiting for somebody to give them the answer. I remember when I first joined EXP, um, I didn't know how to time block or I thought I didn't know how to time block. It wasn't that I didn't know how to do it. I just didn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> but I went to this class, this time blocking, block, blocking class. And I was like, um, they're going to give me the magic sauce. Somebody's going to tell me how I'm going to be so successful in real estate by going to this time blocking, blocking class. And so I went to class. I'm like, okay, so what is the answer? How am I going to be successful in real estate? You're going to time block two hours a day where you're going to cold call. You're going to get on the phone or you're going to call your sphere. You're going to dial are you sure there's not something different I could do? <laughs> nope. That's what you're going to do. Two hours a day, 
on the phone, dialing, sphere, bispos, expireds, online leads. That's what you're going to do. I don't want to. Okay, well, that's what it is. That's how, what you're going to time block. And that's the most important thing you're going to time block. And you're going to treat it like an appointment and you do that. So I think, I guess that's one thing I would have done. If I could go back and do it again, I would have started that sooner. Okay. And just did the hard things sooner. Yeah. Um, and in terms of growing the business, and I think there is something to be said about going in blind. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, you know, there's arguments for both right? but I, yeah, I think when you go in and you don't have a structure in place, you don't have a system that you have to follow, you end up, like you said, learning more things, you become a bit more diverse, and then you figure out what actually works for you. Right. Um, you know, and that's where I guess a mentor can come in. Like, you know, a lot of agents, especially if they're starting out new or they're relaunching or they just switch brokerages or whatever the case may be, you know, they need money right now. Yeah. Not later. And and as a new agent, like that's, I needed money right now. Um, And, uh, and so, yeah. So how are you going to get money right now? You're going to do everything you can to not be a secret agent. You're going to post to the world that you're in real estate and you're going to show your value. And even if you don't know anything, you're going to pretend you do by sharing a lot of facts and news and reports. And, you know, you're at an open house, you're doing a home tour, you're showing house, whatever you got to do to show your credibility. Um, And then, you know, ask people, you know, are you thinking about buying or selling soon? If, if you're not, who do you know who is? And just, start working it and you can't yeah. wait for the business. You know, the last couple of years, you know, agents, especially new agents who came in, it was a little easier for them. You know, they could kind of be order takers. And then for those of us who've been around just even a few years, it was super easy, right? Because, oh, we, we've done a few hard things and now this is really easy. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's not, and it's not going to be for a little bit. I don't know how long, but we're in a market shift where it's, it's you know, not as lucrative is easy. And so we're going to have to actually just work and go back to basics. And I like it. I'm excited because, you know, I like to market. And so like when I had a listing, like I had no time to market that listing. And when in marketing, a listing is fun because you can leverage it to get a lot more leads. And I wasn't given that opportunity in this previous market. So now with a new market, I'm like, Oh, I have a little more time to leverage this listing and get more leads. Yeah. You know, so it's a good thing. Make it work for yourself, yeah. Yeah, so for sure. I don't know if I answered your question, but yeah, I mean, and just sticking with the the marketing agency, the and would you call it that a marketing agency or coaching business? What would you call that? Oh, mine, yeah, it's a coaching business. Coaching business. Mm-hmm. Who was the first hire? You may not necessarily who, but like mm. which position and why did you make that? Your well, yeah, first that's a good question. So you know, when I started putting my content on YouTube and people would find me, they're like, "Hey, Sylvia, can you just?" I saw your your video you on know, how to set up KB Core. Can you just do it for me? I resisted for like a year and a half. Like, no, just watch my video. And you do it, you know, <laughs> or have somebody else watch it and pay them to do it. Cause I'm not doing that. I'm busy. And, and, and so that's how I was for a long time until eventually I caved. And, uh, so then I started doing it, but it got I, like so busy. Like I, I couldn't keep up, up and do a good job. So my first hire was somebody who is in my sales organization who was a single mom and, and she was, had a, like admin background. And she wasn't really selling much real estate. She really wanted to be like spend time with her son. And um, and she had told me previously, hey Sylvia, I just want you to know I, I saw your video on setting up KB Core and I just did it. I did I followed your directions. And I'm like, oh, that's great, Doreen. Well, I reached out to her and said, Hey Doreen, I remember you set up KB Core using my video. And um, I'm wondering if I could just pay you to do setups because the agents are asking me now. She's like, Sure, I would love that. So and then she was my first hire. So I'd start, you know, we'd get the setup and I taught her how to do my setup. And, and then we started improving the setup and we did more. And then, and then it just, you know, the demand got higher. So I had to hire a couple more people. And then we started adding more to the setup. Everything, you know, we do oh, custom newsletters, custom widgets, blah, 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 you know, and then, you know, and then people would need help. Like, okay, that's great. I have a setup. What do I do with KB Core? So I started, you know, doing these Zooms where anybody who got my setup could come and we talk about it. And that was just free. I didn't even charge for it. It was like, they got the setup for super cheap. It was ridiculous. And then, <laughs> like, and, and then, and then um, we'd come and talk and then, and then I just did it free. They could come as much as they want. And 
and do these Zooms. And I'd also do like larger Zooms where anybody, whether they got a setup or not, could come and we just go through different things like, you know, providing downloadable PDFs online to generate leads with landing pages and, um, you know, creating custom newsletters and find, you know, curating content for social media, blah, 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 just whatever, you know, getting some ideas for, for getting listings in the spring or listings in the fall or whatever, just just start collaborating is what I started doing. And then um, as that grew, it just started taking over my life more and more. Um, Then people wanted my WordPress website. So I had to hire um, a WordPress tech. And so then I, then I just kind of was way over my head and I'm like, I need an operations director. Like I can't handle all this. I'd hire an operations director. And then um, somebody who had found me on YouTube um, a few years ago because she was an admin for a team. She had, um, they had KB Core and she needed to learn it. For, you know, she found me. So she'd come to my trainings and stuff. Then she reached out to me like, hey, do you, if you ever need help, like for your company, I would like to work for you. So now she's, she's like one of my coaches. So she helps coach agents too on how to use KB Core. She, she, she's never really been a super active real estate agent. So she can't like take it to the level I can, but she can, she knows so much and she's worked with so many agents and, you know, as an admin, helping them with their next steps with technology. So she's great for that. Um, I have, and now we're doing the showcase IDX websites um, as well as KB Core plugins. So now we have three people working in the WordPress area, four people working in the KB Core setup area. And then I have uh, VAs who are um, doing, you know, um, working on my YouTube channel, helping me with that, uh, my own social media, um, customer service, yeah. running our Facebook group. So it's, and it's never ending. And now I'm like, okay, well, here I am. I just got to keep going, grinding this out. So yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's the hard part of a business like that, where you you know essentially you're the star of the show, right? And it's the same with developers right. who are building websites. Like you, you build great websites, so it's hard to unplug yourself and then start delegating out to things like that. Like, was that a process for you, trusting people to to build yeah. the same quality as you and, and coach the same quality as you? Yes. So, um, one hundred percent. So, like with the the setups, you know. So Doreen, you know, I used to have to go through, check each of her setups and I'd go through it and we'd talk about each one and, you know, I'd go and fix things. Then she got pretty good at it. And then I felt good enough, like, I don't feel like I need to check your, check it anymore. And then we, when we hired our next person, then, you know, I'd go through it w- with both of them. We, you know, Doreen and I would check that other person's work together and we'd go back and forth and, and, um, and then we do start doing like weekly meetings where we're checking all the setups and making sure we're on the same page. And, and then now, but now there's three, I've had up to four doing key course setups. Now I only have three and they just collaborate together on what they're learning. And then, you know, things like with the KV core are changing, right? They're, um, you know, there's updates. Okay. There's this new toggle in the website settings. What do we do? You know, how are we going to handle this? And, and then I'll come up with a new idea of like, oh, we're going to do this with the setup now. So I teach it. So, but now, um, now they basically, I don't have to look at a setup at all now. Like I don't have to do a KB Core setup. I don't have to do a WordPress website setup anymore. I, I'm good now, but it took a couple of years, yeah. <laughs> uh, to be honest. And then the coaching part, um, you know, I used to do an onboarding session with all my new coaching clients every week and then um Gina Marie who is the the one that found me she's from Georgia and she found me and she um she started working with me now she because she's like an expert at onboarding agents for anything now um and she's been with me long enough she understands all my products and how my coaching program works she manages the onboarding session takes care of that and it took me a while me a few months to let that go yeah. And now um, she is going to be doing like her own coaching um, weekly where it's going to be like Tech Wednesdays with Jean Marie, where anything technical about using KB Core, my coaching class are going to come and ask her and I won't be there. Um, I'll, I'll just do I'm doing the other bigger presentations and bigger Q&A. So I can kind of let myself not do all the, the not the littler stuff because it all needs to get done. But yeah. And then now our um my operations director started handling all the email interactions with all the coaching clients and prospective customers who are agents and 
you know, and doing phone calls with them. But now she does that along with Jean Marie. And then, um, and now we have our VAs who do customer service to help answer questions in our email and our Facebook groups. And they have to, they have to take all my training and understand everything about KB Core so they can successfully answer the questions. So it's just been a process. And yeah, it's taken a while and I'm still not there um, in any way. <laughs> Like I keep just adding more work for myself. Like I thought you, you think like I'd get, okay, I'm going to get richer and less busy, but nope, my payroll is getting bigger. So I'm getting poorer, yeah. poorer and busier, <laughs> but it's going to work. I believe in it. Oh, so. Yeah. A lot of it just comes down as you're doing it anyway, right? Like just yeah. educating, educating the staff on how to do you the job. Anyway. I think a lot of sort of great thing uh, that Gary Vaynerchuk posted the other day, just how a lot of managers they kind of get off on micromanaging and proving to their employees that they can do things better. When actually, if you yeah. empower them to do the job they're supposed to do, yeah. you have more time to actually do the things you're better and at. It, and it is really beautiful too. Like when I can show somebody like how to do something and then they, and then they start doing it and like, they did it really well. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. Oh. You know? And that, but then you'll, of course, you know, you get maybe give a task to somebody else and, and maybe they, you realize, okay, they're not there yet. And and no matter how many months I try to coach them, that's not going to be that person. So I'm learning about how to put the right people in the right seats. Yeah, it's a skill. And it's taken yeah. a long time, you know, because I never knew that I was going to do this before. I never knew I was going to create a company and have employees. And that's never something I thought would be happening. But here I am. Yeah. <laughs> so just got to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, well, long may it continue. I, I, I know you'll keep growing because it's just, I can just see it in you. Um, oh that's nice i try yeah, but we'll uh i think we'll wrap it up i felt like you dropped a lot of a lot of good gems in there and, and really the moral of the story is right do the basics take care the of basics. the basics first build the foundation and then the rest will come 100 percent. Right? so where can people me. find you where can they follow you get in touch with you yeah okay so my um you, my website is the sylvia system.com you can also get there by going to kbcorequeen.com um and that's one way and they can learn about what we do for kb core what we do for wordpress then on my instagram it's sylvia d realtor um and then uh, yeah that's it sylvia dana realtor you can find me that way you can find me on youtube sylvia dana um and type in sylvia dana kb core youtube and boom you'll find my youtube channel where help agents do all kinds of things so that's awesome. how you find me. definitely recommend the follow i'm going to follow you on instagram now myself okay awesome all right. I'll Thank you for joining us. I'll follow back. Follow. Yeah, please do. All right. That was great. Thank you. Good to talk to you. Thank you for having me.